there's no stopping me from talking about the Pokemon anime. If you know me, you know I can go on about pretty much any aspect of it for hours on end if given the chance to. On my channel alone, I've gone over how it was written, the first batch of movies, some of the networks it aired on, and this time we're diving into the nitty gritty of the English dub, and I'm sure most of you know that there's not one, but two of them. From its start with 4Kids Entertainment to current days with the Pokemon Company, I'm going over everything that make these dubs what they are, and why the switch from one to the other still has me talking to this day. So let's start off in the one area that everybody knows, and that being the voice change. Oh boy. To give a brief history lesson, Pokemon was dubbed by four kids from its start in 1998, and they were assisted by Studio Tosh Productions. After the fifth season, the two split up, and four kids handled the show by themselves. Around 2005, Pokemon's popularity was on a decline in the States, and the higher-ups at Pokemon USA wanted to produce the show at a lower cost. When 4Kids' contract expired in 2006, their old buddies at Taj did them a solid and stabbed them in the back, outbidding them and heading the dub from then on. But adding salt to the wound, no one was allowed to make the hop over to the new studio. Save for a handful of actors, the whole cast was let go and replaced with soundalikes, though the original narrator came back, oddly enough. Now this is a mess of a controversy, and depending on who you ask, they'll have a different story to tell. Maybe bridges were burned between friends, maybe things were patched up, maybe certain people said bad things about the old cast versus the new cast, or maybe what was said then was just done for damage control. I don't think we'll ever get a concrete answer, but what we know for sure is that fans were mad as hell, and whatever damage control Pusa was doing was not helping. Ooh, it's still the same show you're used to seeing every week with great storylines straight from Japan, original music, and a well thought out plot. Okay, the whole plot thing is another can of worms, but still, you're feeding me nothing but lies. No doubt I was really upset about this, but I kept watching the show because we were right in the middle of the Battle Frontier. What was I supposed to do, just stop? I needed to see what was gonna happen. After that ended, I was like, all right, I guess I'll watch Diamond and Pearl, why not? Now that was a bit rough, especially with that awful rap intro. But then, something happened the following season. Not only did we get a theme song that didn't suck, but familiar voices started springing up again. At this point, the costs of the dub weren't kept as low anymore, so Pusa, now known as the Pokemon Company International, switched from Taj over to Duart Film and Video, who previously dubbed a Pokemon short and the Darkrai film before handling the series full time. Coincidentally, Taj went out of business at the same time this happened. As a result of the switch, actors under four kids started coming back to the show, kicking off with Casey Rogers reprising her role of Wobbuffet. Oh yeah! Battle Dimension's really special to me because I, along with many other fans, was hearing old voices in new and old roles alike, minor and major. Dan Green as gym leader Byron, Sean Schemmel as galactic leader Cyrus, Ted Lewis reprising Giovanni, the list goes on. Even OG voice of Jesse and Misty, Rachel Lillis showed up to voice Maylene, and I was so giddy hearing her again, you have no idea. I actually cried. It became a game of who's coming back this week with each episode, on top of whatever was happening in the show itself. That went on consistently till the end of Diamond and Pearl, and semi-frequently until Best Wishes ended. Meanwhile, back at Four Kids, they were dealing with an infamous Yu-Gi-Oh lawsuit, and long story short, they shut down at the end of 2012. After that, if you weren't a regular on Pokemon, you weren't really working in New York, so a lot of talent either ended up moving to LA or went into semi-retirement, whittling the main cast down to a much smaller group currently. Nowadays, the whole VA change is the least of my worries with the dub. I've had no animosity towards the voice group for a long time now, and these days they also work on Yu-Gi-Oh! and other do art shows. I like to refer to them as the four kids of today. And in some cases, while I prefer an old voice over the new one, I can still find it to be a great fit for the character, like in the case of Brock or Jesse. There's other problems with the current dub I'd like to discuss, but before that, let me swerve back to four kids to highlight what it had to offer. I don't think people give four kids enough credit. For all they did wrong, they put so much back into Pokemon, it's not even funny. From original soundtracks right down to original animation. You know the intro for Johto League Champions? That is all original stuff, only used in this specific opening. They got the Japanese animators to make an intro just for their audience, and they also did that with Pokemon Forever, adding extra scenes to the movie to better explain stuff. When was the last time you ever heard anybody doing that? The writing's also something that goes underlooked a bit. Four kids got so witty with the show's writing, and it really reached its peak during Hoenn. Half the time I rewatch, I'm there for the references and the jokes, and there's so much from Team Rocket especially that has me burst out laughing. They've got some of the 
best back and forth I have ever heard, and Meowth even had a little nickname for James, you remember? Jimmy? Little touches like that make this dub so fun. I think Team Rocket suffered the most come the Switch. Writing-wise, I don't really like how they've been handled since. For years, I've been hearing them say stuff the old Team Rocket would never say, like rhyming and alliterating every chance they get, Meowth going, you dig, etc. And Ash, he went from what I thought was a mature, confident trainer to sounding immature and clunky early in the new dub, saying stuff like, K and I'm so psyched. It's gotten better over time, but back then, I slowly grew to hate Ash because that wasn't who I came to know over the years. Whoever I was watching on screen, it sure wasn't Ash. Now this video isn't gonna be me just bashing the new dub all day. TPCI did do things with the show I actually liked. One, they called Rice Balls Rice Balls for the three times they showed up before disappearing altogether, but there's more. Another change was the rate at which episodes came out in English, and this was a pretty big change. With four kids and their long season breaks, episodes were way behind the original Japanese, usually upwards to a year. Like when Kids WB showed the sneak peek for the advanced series, Ash just got his seventh Johto badge. We didn't even make the jump to digital yet. But TPCI sped things up due to the impending release of the Diamond and Pearl games, and they went from a one year gap to seven, six, five months apart just a few years into their run. Presently, the dub is only two to three months behind Japan, so I gotta give them props for that. There were also signs of brilliance every now and again, like in the episode where no Togepi has gone before, where everything just aligned perfectly, and it's one of my favorite episodes of the whole show. Everyone sounds on point, the writing is snappy, and it had no dub music whatsoever, title card and all. They later did the same thing for the semi-final frontier, aka Ash vs. Tobias, and where I like the previous episode more in Japanese, I prefer this one in English. And then what seemed to be the biggest turning point for the dub came in the form of Best Wishes. The first batch of episodes again used no dub music and the show got a more faithful script, with episode names nearly identical to the original Japanese and even a literal translation of Team Rocket's motto. They even brought back Who's That Pokemon after four kids dropped it. Who saw that coming? I didn't. It seemed like Pokemon was finally among other anime in some cases, and it felt the most balanced the dub has ever been, even to this day. Best Wishes itself has its faults, but I really do like the dub for it. But as that series was wrapping up, I feel there's been a decline in the dub's production ever since. So with that said, let's get to what I've been alluding to and go over the dub's sense of music, shall we? From day one, the dub has used its own original music, typically in the case of when it's just cheaper to use their own stuff instead of the Japanese soundtrack. With four kids, their BGM was played a lot more as the dub progressed, but it really fit in with the show. I still hum a lot of cues and battle themes like the lighthouse theme or the Pokédex jingle. It's a bummer the underscore was never officially released. And seriously, why is no one taking the time to recreate some of these themes, like all y'all do with Dragon Ball Z and whatnot? And I can't forget to mention their theme songs. All of them are great, but the advanced songs are just perfect. I Wanna Be a Hero captures the feeling of an experienced trainer in a new region, and Unbeatable has the spirit of the very first theme, just done so much better, and it makes for an awesome send-off to the original dub. Four Kids' background music was actually kept in the dub until the Taj Duart switch in season 11, so I'm guessing those events are related somehow. Stranger still, though there was new musical staff, a couple original composers stayed on board, namely John Leffler and Manny Corallo. Leffler had been in charge of the show's music since its start and continued those duties, though I say his best stuff was done with his colleagues at Four Kids. There were still good theme songs like We Will Be Heroes and Stand Up, but also generic stuff like Rival Destinies and stinkers like the DP rap. Here's a fun game, take a shot every time they use the word destiny or any combination of you and me in a theme song post Battle Frontier. The fact that they're limited to being 30 seconds long also didn't help much. Corallo still handled the background music and it was still great to listen to. Paul's theme is a real standout track. Those two stayed with the show until X and Y, where they were replaced with Pokemon's current composer, Ed Goldfarb. Goldfarb himself is a real nice guy and I respect his work, but it doesn't do a thing for me, and this was one of the biggest issues I had with XY's dub. Music was a powerful motivator for a lot of moments, and the English equivalents really didn't do those scenes right. I get they can't use licensed stuff like XYZ, but even then, you could make something original that knocks it out of the park like that song, but I just didn't get that. And since XY, they've used less original Japanese music than ever before, so the show is wall to wall with stuff I find bland. And this situation affects the films now too. Starting with Pokemon Forever, the film soundtracks remained 
remained untouched from the original, staying that way until XY, where 99% of it is replaced. It's even odder when we get sneak peeks of upcoming stuff with original music intact, only to be rescored in the official release. Why is this happening now? Why is it four kids could retain so much original stuff to the point they kept instrumentals of ending themes and made songs like Make a Wish, which I still cannot believe myself, like, whoa! But the Pokemon Company in 2017 can't be bothered to keep more than one count it one track in one of their films is it a licensing issue are they not rolling in dough like four kids was or do they just not give a crap anymore there's no official word on why and i'm sure we'll never get one you can probably guess by now why i started caring less about the dub come x and y i didn't feel like it was giving me the best experience i could get out of the show anymore and i know it can be done better in terms of reaching an audience outside its target demographic i know this because not only did tpci themselves do a better before, but four kids did it constantly, and their name spells out their target audience for goodness sakes. I can turn on any episode from their dub and find something that makes me laugh or appreciate the time and effort put into it. With TPCIs, I get the feeling they're only doing enough to get by. They're not in the business for going above and beyond, so that's not something they have to think about. Also, and this one isn't really TPCI related, but Casey Rogers retiring at the start of Sun and Moon led me to drift away from it as well. I mean, Wobbuffet's one of my favorite favorite Pokemon. The fact he kept his voice after the switch really did keep me tethered to the show. No joke. Now that that's gone, along with all the other characters she played, it leaves me with one less reason to watch. I don't want to live in a world where Mimey doesn't sound like, my, my, mine. There are a bunch of areas in the show where I may not agree with their sense of direction, but I'm not upset with the people personally. They're just doing their jobs. I'm more mad at TPCI for cutting costs on the show in the first place. I'm not saying they weren't in the right to do it. I'm just saying the results really ruffled my feathers. Like I said, there are things I do like about their dub, but I'll always enjoy 4Kids' take on Pokemon more. And before you call nostalgia bias, let me remind you I was 10 years old when the change happened, and my brother was only 8, so I think I can give my thoughts on both and at least have half of an idea of what I'm talking about. One thing I really wanted to get across is that a whole lot more goes into making the show what it is than just the voices. The switch was so jarring that between the new writing style and voice cast, it almost felt like a different show and TPCI tried to act like nothing happened, but we all knew. I felt like I was being insulted, like they thought I wouldn't know something was wrong. And when the stupid children can see through the ruse, you're not gonna hear the end of it. It would also be a real bummer if the old stuff wasn't easily accessible, but given this is Pokemon, it thankfully is. DVDs, reruns, streaming, it's everywhere and it's still celebrated. We may not see actors come back to their original roles and the music ordeal may not get any better, but there's still 400 plus episodes episodes, eight movies, and a bunch of other stuff to look back on and enjoy. And if you like the current dub, that's fine too. More power to ya. I'll still watch it out of obligation, but I say the best of it lies with four kids. Though if you still think there's some bias, I can always bring up the Legend of Thunder. There is no excuse for how badly that turned out. You run and you rule! <laughs> and I am outta here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw. Now, if you're as obsessive about the dub as I am, tell me what you think the best slash worst qualities of both dubs are. Or heck, even a joke or line from either dub that made you go, wait, did I just hear this from Pokemon? And be sure to give this video a like, share it with someone you think would be interested in it, subscribe, check out all my social media pages, check out my Patreon page, all that good stuff. And with all that said, I'll see you guys next time for another installment in this month of Pokemon. Catch you later!